Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a watercolor painting and I thought I would take a few minutes to uh, just sort of loosen up and try some uh, practice exercises, if you will. Usually in Ju June I give some sort of a watercolor workshop that has a lot of exercises. I'm not doing a watercolor workshop this year, but I thought I would do a few exercises just to show you kind of how you might loosen up if you're uh, kind of blocked before you start painting, don't know exactly what you want to paint. Um, it's always good to get water in the brush and just start throwing it on paper. I picked up some paper that's not not the best paper, but it's a good, uh, good watercolor paper. And I'll go through that, I'll go through the brushes and uh, the paints, and then we'll start a little painting that I'm gonna do of a, um, a golf course, one hole on the golf course in Augusta, Georgia. It's probably one of the most beautiful golf courses uh, around, at least in the United States, and uh, has a, no, the 12th hole is a very beautiful hole. It's um, always photographed. It's one of the most uh, gorgeous places in the springtime when the Masters Tournament is being played in Augusta. So we're going to try to do that. I've never done a golf course hole before, but uh, I'll try it today and let you see how I do. So uh, before we start, I want to uh, just go over the brushes for you and the, the paints and uh, have that out of the way. So the brushes I'm using is my uh, Sterling Edwards set, my palette uh, with colors. And I have a Sterling Edwards set of brushes that uh, consist of a, of a medium brush. It's a one and a half inch bristle brush, a small brush. It's a one inch bristle. I have a one inch flat, nylon flat, half inch nylon flat. I have a, two or three rounds. I have a number 12 round here, a number eight, and a number four, uh, and a, uh, a number uh, I guess I got two number fours. Oh yes, I do have two number fours. And then I have a script liner that I add, which is a uh, by American Painter. It's a, like a number uh, one, I think, something like that. Okay, um, that's enough for the brushes. The paints go around the palette very quickly. Um, have neutral tint here, similar to a Payne's gray, cyan blue, ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet, crimson lake, garnet lake, cadmium red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre, cupric green, golden lake, similar to raw sienna, uh, limon yellow, primary yellow, burnt umber, sap green, Auvignon orange, primary red magenta, still to green brown. These are all mimary blue watercolors. They're very transparent. Uh, a few of them have a little uh, opaqueness. Uh, typically, yellow ochre has some opaqueness in it, but uh, other than that, they're all very transparent. I also have a little bit of light red here that I add just uh, because I had it. And I wanted to try it in some paintings not long ago, and so I use it. So with that being said, uh, I think we're ready to go. I have on my board up here a watercolor paper that I've actually divided into quadrants. So when you're going to do some exercises and do a little practicing, sometimes it's a good idea to just take a piece of watercolor paper. This is 11 by four, uh, 14 watercolor paper and uh, it's, uh, I just put some masking tape over to divide it into quadrants to give myself some, uh, some uh, four, four places to sort of play around with uh, paints or color. And uh, so I'll get to doing some of that now. I'm just going to throw a little water in here. Maybe we'll do a little thing with sky in this in this particular quadrant and I'll pick something else for the other quadrants and uh, it will uh, kind of loosen me up get me going here this morning I'm gonna get some uh, some ultra blue and uh, just show you how with a little bit of clear water on here all I did was just hit that with clear water and uh, I'll just throw in some light blue here leaving room for clouds so the white paper kind of becomes the clouds uh, and uh, if I want to gray that down a little bit, I just touch in my burnt sienna and put a little gray color in there and it cools it down um, and gives me some shadows for these clouds. Uh, come back and get a little uh, more blue. Um, just basically clouds, sky, this whole painting is, is sky. And it's, you don't know exactly what it is when you see it like that. Um, but one definite way to make it look like sky is to put a horizon in there. So let's take a little of our burnt sienna and 
Down here, we'll just put a very low sky, put a low horizon here, pick up some other colors, uh, maybe a little ochre, um, something like this. Once you put a sky in, uh, put a horizon in, all of a sudden it starts looking like something you recognize. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything very exotic, but when you're finished, you have yourself a little painting. If you want to put a, a few mountains or something in the distance, you can always come back and put in a few things back here that look like they might be, uh, it's gotta be darker. You gotta pick up something darker than what's behind it, right? So you wanna put in a few things that look like some mountains back here, maybe. Uh, I'm not trying to make a complete finished painting. These are just sort of exercises to get me loosened up. Uh, so that's, that's good enough for that. Um, let's, uh, let's move over to the other quadrant now and uh, see if my uh, new gadget here works. Aha, uh -huh. okay, there it does. So I can just swoop over there and say, okay, now on this, this side, we're gonna use one of these Sterling Edwards uh, bristle brushes and uh, I'm just gonna put some water on with it. Uh, I'm gonna coat this whole thing with water. Bristle brushes are almost never used for watercolor. They're always used for oil paintings. But uh, Sterling Edwards has a set of brushes that he's invented that uh, have very, very short bristles on them. And uh, they make some interesting shapes. And uh, he has some, some very good uh, videos that you might want to take a look at. Um, the paints, the Mimary Blue paints he uses as well, uh, they're very expensive for a beginner. They're probably not something you want to start out with necessarily, but uh, uh, because they are very expensive, but uh, they certainly uh, are something that uh, gives you some very, very beautiful paintings, very transparent. I'm going to pick up some of this cyan blue. It's a different color blue than the ultra blue. And I'm going to just start at the top. I'm going to just make a graded wash. And you do that by just coming down, coming down, Coming down, I'm not putting any more paint in the brush, I'm just making horizontal brush strokes. Okay, so now I have something that looks like a sky. Um, and all I took was like on this little quadrant, which is one fourth of a 11 by 14 uh, watercolor paper, um, it took four strokes to make that. Have a little lightness here in the background and uh, I'm just going to leave that for a minute and uh, just see what happens. Um, one of the things that uh, I've watched in some of the videos, I continue to try to learn as well, folks. So I watch videos, I study other painters, I still keep track of what other artists are doing, and particularly artists that I like their work. Um, you may not like the same work I do, but if you find an artist and you like their work, try to uh, find some videos of their work or find some uh, books that they write or whatever and study them and see how they do things. Um, um, this particular artist um, has sort of invented his own, definitely has his own style um, and uh, will uh, he'll take this brush and when that paper starts to dry slightly, start putting in some uh, some trees or mountains. Uh, and by using this brush only, this bristle brush, I don't know what it's gonna do, but I'm gonna touch it and see. Just touch it very lightly. It's really so wet, um, it's uh, sort of blending together. I'm gonna get a little more paint on the brush and uh, Put in some other, the thicker the paint, in other words, the less water in the paint, the more of these things will stand out. Um, pick up some ultra tint. Uh, basically, I'm using my cyan blue and a little ultra blue and uh, throwing in a little ultra, a uh, little um, neutral tint now. Um, and come over here and put in a few like this. 
You see I'm getting a very, very soft, almost a distant set of trees. They look like they're in fog almost. This is pure wet on wet. And uh, the amount of water in the brush, the amount of water in the paint on the paper and in the paint make all the difference in the world as to how it sticks. I'm making a little thicker mixture of paint now uh, with more paint, less water. Combination of neutral tints and my blues. Uh, seeing if I can get a little darker color here as I come forward. You know, they get darker as they come forward, right? So we're going to put in some trees now that are darker yet. Something like that. It's more dark. Start sticking in a little brown over here. Maybe we'll get some grayer colors. Um, So I'm just barely, barely touching this thing. Going a few vertical strokes just to loosen myself up. Something quick, fast. These are always fun to practice with a new brush or a new, a new paint or a new technique. If you learn, see somebody that does something you like, try, try it. Might, might be able to uh, help create your own style a little better. My style is pretty eclectic. I guess I collect ideas and thoughts and methods from a lot of different painters and sort of use, pick and choose what I want and uh, don't get too hung up about it. Um, you see this is might be a little dry. I don't know if this is dry enough down here to start putting in a, huh, I just made a nice little uh, it's like snow back there with my finger. Still wet, but it's drying off down here in the foreground. So another little technique you can try. Use your fingers. Use whatever you can for a painting tool. It doesn't have to be a $500 brush. I don't know if brushes are $500, but there are some that are very expensive. I know that. Um, I don't tend to buy them, but um, I know there are artists who swear by either one type of brush or one style of fur uh, in their brushes and won't use anything else, but I like to experiment. I'm going to put in a little bit of ground here, maybe leave it look a little bit like uh, snow out there. The darker blues will give you a sort of a, looks like snow bank, dry snow, wet snow. Um, I don't know, maybe that's good enough for that one. Um, haven't been uh, painting too much here too long. Uh, clean my palette out a little bit and uh, come back and see if we can do something else. Um, one of the things I'm going to do in this particular uh, painting is uh, we're going to, since it's a, it's a picture of a golf course hole, we're going to have some greens. So uh, I'm going to drop my, if I go down, okay, right there, I'm at my next quadrant. Okay, let's see if we can find some greens that are going to match this green we need for this golf course. So I'm going to put in some semi-clear water, I guess. I need to clean my brush out a little more. Clear water. Put it in here and let's pick up some of this limon yellow which is a very very bright bright yellow and i'm going to just sort of plop that in here in an area where i might make a a hole for a golf course this may not be the way i do it when i do the final painting but that's the way i'm going to do it right now just to see how this works. This is wet on dry. There's no, uh, almost no water in the, on the paper. No water on the paper. A little bit of water in the brush. I'm going to pick up some ultra blue. I'm going to come back over that now and just sort of wash over it and see if I can get this lighter green color here. Not quite green enough for me. I need this bright doesn't look, the 
color I'm looking for. How about cyan blue? Let's see what that does. Okay, that's a different color green. It's got more blue in it. Doesn't look like a doesn't look like a uh, a hole or a green on a golf course. To me, doesn't look like they got the right color there. But I'm working on it. I put a little more yellow in and see what happens now. Let's pull it down here. See if I can get the color I want by putting yellow on top of the blue. All right, I'm starting to get the color here. You see the this bright yellowish green that indicate many golf courses have that since they, they spend a lot of time and money on their greens, of course, to get this sort of light green color. Hope that's showing up on the camera well. I don't know. Um, but um, there's yellows in it. Um, usually it's a yellow with green in it as opposed to a yellow with orange in it, but there, there can be some, some other colors in there. This particular uh, course has, this particular hole on this golf course sort of has a bank that sort of comes down like this, so you start putting in some three-dimensional shapes to make it look like you've got a drop-off here, which you do. Um, and it sort of goes into a uh, brownish, there's a border here, it actually goes down to a pond. So the golf, the, the green is like this and then it, it curves off to the front and and then there's a sort of a barrier here and then there's water below that. So we're going to try to do that. Uh, the other thing we're going to do in this painting is uh, above the greens there's some beautiful trees. There's also some uh, uh, sand traps in here as all golf courses have. Um, let me pick up, see if this red magenta, I want to try this magenta color and see if I can find that color that's in some of these trees, these little uh, flower, flowering bushes back here. Usually azaleas, I think, are what the, uh, is one of the flowers, one of the many types of flowers that are planted around this golf course. So, you see I got water running down on my, again, this is practice, folks. I'm just kind of testing colors, testing brush strokes, looking for something that makes my green look like a a golf course color and I got a big old blossom started because I let that wet water run uh, the, the water run down into the wa water that was already on the paper which is how you create blossoms so I showed you that by accident something like that um, then in the background of course uh, I'm going to end up doing this whole painting here before I'm done, but uh, uh, we've got a lot of uh, trees and bushes and all kinds of stuff back here in the background that sort of surround this hole. And uh, so it starts looking like something that you might recognize as a hole around a golf course. Um, in particular, we're trying to paint in one specific hole, which is very well known. and. Uh, so we have to do some of it right, otherwise we'll be... Okay. So that's just some practicing, getting, trying different brush strokes, trying different uh, ways of making this painting. I think I want to see if I can come up with the colors now that, uh, now that I think I know how I can get the green for that, for the uh, green of this golf course. A green is a color, it's also a place on a golf course. Um, so, if my English is confusing some of you, I hope to, it's not too misunderstandable, but uh, the color green is the color of the green. And uh, so this is just nothing to write home about, but it's also a little practice that's worked pretty well. Let's move over to this fourth quadrant now and see what we can do over here. Um, 
we have some sand, these sand traps. So I want to see if I can find that color in my palette. I'm just going to put a few little wet places here. Um, it's some color of brown without a lot of without a lot of uh, red in it. It's uh, really a whitish. These, these particular uh, sand traps, sand pits, uh, bunkers, whatever you want to call them, um, have a lot of whitish white sand. I have an area here that there is a specific sand trap in this painting. So I'm using almost uh, pure raw sienna here. Um, and It'll, it'll dry lighter than that, but it still has a sandy appearance, which is kind of what I want. Um, and um, it has specific um, rims around it to show that it's set down in the... It'll be hard for me to do that here because it's all wet. I'll have to use my hair dryer after a while to, uh, to actually make that sand trap. So if I don't like it, as long as the paper is wet, you can see I lift that right off with a paper towel. Um, come back here and pick up a little more and see since it's, it's not completely dry, but it's drier than it was. So I've got a little uh, trap that sort of that looks like this. It has a little finger on it sticking up here. Something like that. Mm. The green grasses around it and to help you see the three dimensionality of that sand trap there's a there's a bank back there it's kind of like I did with this bank where this water is on the other side here um, we'll pop in just a kind of doing the same thing on me here it needs to be drier so I'm learning something here to make sure that I don't make that mistake when I paint the final painting. Um, that I want to make sure that it's good and dry before I put anything around it. Um, come back and pick up a little more of my cyan blue and some green and see if I can lay in how this, this green will lay above it. There's a green that flows around like this, all around this trap. has a little finger that sticks down in like this. Okay, so this is the idea um, how to start making maybe a sand trap in a green. You want to make it, you don't want to make it so uh, circular that you're looking down on it because you are looking at it at an angle. And uh, in this particular photo that I'm referencing, um, See if this brown will go in there now without too much trouble. It's still very wet, um, but we can make it look like there's a, a lip on there. I don't know if that looks all that good or not, but anyway, by just doing these kinds of things, <clears throat> you can learn and prepare for a final painting. It's just it's color studies, it's some value studies, it's some brushwork studies to see what's going to work on the final painting. And uh, you may not use all these uh, tricks or techniques or brushes even, or colors, um, although the colors you're going to want to try to get the, uh, to match certain colors to make the viewer think they're looking at a golf course. So anyway, let me, uh, Go to the next step. Now I'm going to get myself centered here on this uh, quadrant so you can see the, the different uh, pieces. I'm going to zoom my camera back now. I have some remote controls I've been able to attach to my uh, cameras that allow me to operate it from a distance so I can stand up here at the, at the uh, board and not have to run back and forth and try to uh, do something else. So now I'm just going to take this off and uh, 
basically I throw this away. I may use it as a reference for the, the painting, of course, because I, I uh, I like some of the colors I was able to achieve, so if I can remember those colors when I get into the final painting, um, it will be very helpful. Um, let's see here. There we go. All right, let's take this thing off, and voila, we have a drawing on our standard 300-pound watercolor paper. This, this paper is... Uh, 140 pounds, it's pretty flimsy, uh, so I kind of use that as my practice sheets many times just to uh, get myself going and not have to uh, warm up too much. Um, all right, so now we have this, and uh, I'm going to get rid of this this practice sheet, and uh, we'll move on. This one is the uh, the photograph. I actually have the. Uh, I've done a little value map, as I do most times, and have a sketch on here so you can see the sketch. Hope you can see that well enough. Uh, zoom in just a little maybe and let you see that. Um, so I want to get started. I'm going to put the sky in first, and uh, which is normal. And I uh, just want to make sure that we're aligned here. I have these, since I have these remote controls now, I want to make sure that I don't cut you out from seeing some of the painting when I'm working on it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let me see, get a... More paper towel here. All right. <clears throat> Clear water. Start at the top, and we're going to just put in a little bit of sky up here. Um, I want it to be wet on wet, so I want clear water to uh, sort of run down here and uh, fill in these areas. So, again, this is four, 11 by 14 Fabriano Artistico uh, watercolor paper, and it's 300 pounds and for those of you who, those of you who use the metric measuring system it's a 35 centimeters by 28 centimeters and it's 640 GSM in weight all right so that's wet um, I'm going to uh, give it a second to soak in so we have enough water in there some of this may need a little more down here. I don't know. I'll put some more water in if I need it later. All right. With that, let's find a nice, pleasing blue. That that blue that we had in our practice, that ultra blue, was a very nice, pleasant blue sky color. So I'm going to sort of lay that in. A little bit darker on the left, lighter on the right. Here, like this. Got some tree trunks that I'm going to run through there, and as I continue to paint with this, it'll start lightening up because I get a little more water in it. And uh, so I'm just going to sort of layer this on that, the graded wash that you saw me do in that other practice. And as I move to the right, I want to get just a little more in here. I'm going to leave some areas for clouds. Make sure it doesn't run too much. Why does mine run? Because I'm painting vertically. Usually your watercolor demonstrators will always be painting horizontally or at least on some sort of a tilted board that's uh, not too uh, vertical to keep the paint from running. But I want to show you this with my camera setups I have. I uh, don't have an overhead camera because this is not a television studio. This is my art studio that has been converted. And um, <clears throat> so I'll, I work with the 
the vertical runs if I get them. And I'm going to put a little bit down here, maybe just very lightly put in some wash down here. Okay, that's... Now the more I go back in here, the more I'll mess that sky up, so I don't want to keep going back in there. I think that's looking okay for me. I don't want to uh, kill it, and I don't want to have... So I have some clouds, and I have some uh, interesting shapes there, so that it's not all uh, one graded, smooth graded wash. All right, the trees in the distance here have various colors in them. They have some yellows <clears throat> and greens. They have some blues. Uh, very, very light because it's in the distance. I'm going to pick up some of my purple color and some of my yellow color and just sort of <clears throat> back here in this area start putting in some soft trees that have some green in them and have some blue, have some light, light green, which is where I'm getting that yellow from. One inch flat brush. I don't think I told you that, but that's what I'm using so far. I tend to start out with a big, wide, flat brush to start with and paint with it as long as I possibly can. Um, I'll leave a few spots in here for some trees. I know I've got trees that are going to be going all over the place back here. Um, this does come down. There's a lot of green that comes all the way down in here. Um, as long as what I put over it's going to be darker, it's not going to be a problem, but it's the... If I want something darker over this, or something lighter over this, I need to leave it out or paint around it. Now I'm getting into dry paper down here because I didn't put any water down there. But this is going to be a light, very light area. If I need to get some more darks in there, I will darken it up. Pick up a few more blues, maybe. Um, pick up some of this ultra purple and yellow. Give me a grayish color. I can gray down these colors a little bit. So I'm dry brushing now up into the sky area that's starting to dry off. And put in some darker colors here. I'm going to put another layer over the top of this, but uh, right now I want to get in as much as I can here. Leave some room for trees and for trunks. Um, just leaving some abstract shapes in that area to uh, allow me to carve out some trees in a little bit with some darker colors, darker values. Down here, got a lot of interesting shapes. More dark in front of these, so as they come forward and get lower in the in the middle ground here, they start getting darker. So I'm putting a little, a little less uh, water in there, a little more paint to uh, thicken it up, darken them down. And here, there's some areas that are greener. Just leaving some white space in there to uh, paint around to uh, make it look like I've got to be able to come back and maybe put a little glaze over that if I want after a bit and uh, show even some more depth. Um, the depth has created really um, pick a little red. I'm going to pick some crimson up here and put this in to get a little different color of green. Gray that green down a little bit as I come across. Uh, a little more red in it. Uh, don't see a lot of red. 
lost my train of thought there. I was explaining something, and then I got distracted by Lizard and Crimson, or uh, Crimson Lake, as the color is called in memory blue colors. I've got some areas here I can leave paint around some trees, a little negative painting back here. Um, just kind of throw in some mixtures of colors. Some trees up here in the canopy. Change the color, change the values, change whatever you can think of. Got some things running over here. Let's put in a few red of this. Put a little red into this. We'll sort of gray those down a little bit. Um, pick up some more yellows. Even there's some, start getting some, you see some of this magenta color coming in in the back here in some areas. Uh, Redden it up a little more even over here. And come back and get some green in there. Come on here, folks. There we go. All right, just using the edge of this big old one inch brush, leaving gaps and a lot of places. Um, pick up a little more blue. I want to get a little more green coming back into this now, back in this area. I'm just painting fast and loose, very abstractly. Not uh, trying to make any specific tree. I'm just sort of giving you the impression of trees back here in this background. I'll put a little more of this green over here. It started getting a little bit too bland over here. Too one note. Okay, something like that. Over here we're going to pick up some more these colors. I let my brush split open and you see I just painted a, a limb off of a tree that's not there yet, but it will be there. Right there in this area, as the brush sort of split apart, I just sort of used that as a you know, horizontal stroke to uh, give myself a room for a branch of a tree. I don't know if you can see it all that well, but we're just sort of painting this middle ground. It's, it's kind of background, middle ground, I guess it is. Um, back in here, it's got a lot of, a lot of greenery, a lot of trees, and a lot of stuff growing up back here. We got a tree that's in here. Got some. There's a split between two trees right here. I'll draw that and then sort of hit some other areas over here with green. Maybe a couple things up here. Not trying to copy this image um, slavishly like a like photorealism. I don't do photorealism. Uh, photorealism to me is should be left to the camera. Um, if I wanted a photo of something, I'll take a photo of something. I want this to be artistically rendered and I want it to have some nice artistic movement and shapes to it. There's a number of greens floating around in here, darks and dark greens and some light greens. So I'm just sort of painting abstractly here. All right. Um, let's see how that looks. All right, let's stop and clean out our brush and maybe clean out the palette and uh, let that dry for a few seconds. It's drying fairly quickly today um, anyway, so I don't have to do a lot of hair dryer work. I know that can be annoying when I Turn that hair dryer on. Let's get this cleaned out a little bit more. There we go. All right. So what's next? See how this is. This is mostly dry. Uh, 
use the back of your hand instead of the front of your hand. I touched it there for a second, but you have more oil on the tips of your fingers than you do the back of your fingers. So you can always tell how dry it is by laying your, the back of your hand on it. And if it feels cool, it's damp and wet. If it feels about the temperature of your hand or room temperature or warm, it's probably dry. So that's always a good little tip that's nice to know. Um, this area over here on the left, I think I've got some more yellows with a little more orange. And I'm gonna pick up a little of my uh, primary yellow over here and just sort of lay in a few things in here, sort of overpaint some of these areas a little bit to uh, change the color a little bit, add some more. Got a lot of white sitting in here, a lot of little white specks and stuff. So this will just brighten it up a little bit and uh, the sun is really kind of sh shining in this way because the shadows are going to be showing that the sun is coming from the so the top left corner here. So let's show those sun highlights floating around in here, just lightening up some of this area with primary yellow, which is hard for you to see, I'm sure. It's, you just have to take my word for it. That's what I'm doing. Okay, no runs, no runs. All right, I talked about not using the hair dryer, but I think I am going to dry this just to make sure I've got good dry paper everywhere. So I'll flip off my microphone and dry this thing. Okay, back now, let's see, that should be good and dry. Definitely feels warm. Okay, um, had a lot of green in that background, probably more than I should really want, but um, I'm gonna start putting some colors over it. I've got these trees that go in back there and uh, it's, there's a lot of silhouette in this because the sun is behind and coming through this this course and uh, hitting hitting on the uh, backs of these trees so it tends to make them in a silhouette form so I'm just taking my still to grain brown which is a very beautiful ground brown um, and my little bit of ultra uh, burnt sienna rather um, I'm going to pick up a little ultra blue here and put in this corner to, to get a little darker color and a little bit of gray. Uh, as I mix that brown with this blue, I get a interesting color of gray. Still the grain gives me one color. If I mix it with the burnt sienna, I get a little different color. But um, I want this to be fairly thick because I'm going to paint in some very specific trees here now. I want to make sure that I have like this tree here. Some of these are very distinct and you need to make sure that you have have them. Um, it's not, wasn't dark enough so I added just a bit of the neutral tint and I darkened it up here. So there's a big old tree that just sort of goes right up here right off the, right off the paper. Little horizontal strokes. Um, there's another dark one that sort of fits right here. Goes this way and splits and goes up this way. And then there's a lot of other little fine branches on this, but I'm not going to put those in with this brush. I'm going to put this in with there's a, another one that sort of goes up here. There's a, a lot of trees back here, folks. Many, many, many trees. Um, it's a forest, basically. Uh, so, dry the 
try to paint out a little bit. If you've got too much water in your brush, you can always take a paper towel and touch the bottom of the brush to the uh, paper towel and it will suck extra water out and it sort of dries the paint out that's in the brush and makes it drier. As long as you don't lose your, all your paint, you're okay. Looks like I lost most of my paint on that little thing. So we go right off the top of the page. So we have a lot of trees in here, a lot of On the woods. Over here we have a big tree that comes in. So hopefully that's coming through. Those little drips of water probably bother you, they bother me. Um, more still the grain, get a little more neutral tint. Let's over here. We got one big tree over here, and it's very, very noticeable. A little bigger than the others. He has a companion sitting here nearby that's something like that. We got some in here that are very distinct. <clears throat> so we're just getting a lot of of the woods in here. These are some uh, <clears throat> type of pine tree, probably a Georgia pine of some sort. Um, <coughs> excuse me. All right, I'm going to come back now and pick up one of my rigger brushes here and see if I can put in just a few more. Oh, that's not a rigger. Let my rigger go. Here it is. All right. I'm going to put in some <clears throat> finer branches now with this rigger. The rigger is made for fine detailing. They were, it's called a rigger because they used to paint the rigging of ships with it. Um, oil painters would have a real fine brush with long hairs that would uh, allow them to make the, the ropes and so forth on the... Uh, on boats and ships. I'm going to put some of this in here because this is detail that we don't want to lose. And uh, put in some more. I'm going to put some more dark branches and dark uh, pine boughs over this. Um, but I want to get in some of these. I need another tree. There was a tree that was right in here. See if I can do it with my rigger. Sure. Pick up some dark. There we go. There's a lot of stuff going on back here. Plenty of trees and make it look like a forest back there. A lot of 
over here. A few more. Spend a lot of time on this, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot more on it because I want to get moving on some other things. But I want you to get the feel that this is a heavily wooded area back there and has a lot of trees, a lot of growth. It's an area where you do not want to hit your golf ball if you're playing golf on this course. And the way I play golf, that's exactly where I would hit my ball back into here. I'd be back in that woods looking for it. So it's more fun to paint it than to go look for a golf ball in this woods to me. All right, so that'll do that for now. All right, um, a little water here I need to pick up. Pick up the bottom of these. Okay, so now we still have a lot of uh, boughs, boughs, B-O-U-G-H-S, boughs on these trees. Um, I'm going to pull out some of my blues here and mix it with this dark brown that I've got. See if I can come up with a color that represents the dark green of this. Just a little yellow in there to green it up a little bit, but it's got to be a very, very dark, dark greenish color. It's almost black in the photograph, but I don't want to paint it black because that doesn't uh, translate well for a painting. It may be that way when you take a photograph, but for a painting, you don't want that. So let's see here if I can start popping in some really dark. I'm using my big old one inch brush here, folks. Um, got boughs that come in this way from another tree coming over here. Um, change the color a little bit, get a little more green in it, maybe, or a little more blue in it, I don't know. Some of these just run right off the top of the paper and come back and have sort of make a nice little canopy back here. I'm looking, trying to design abstractly again. Let's change that color. I'm getting too much of it there. Let's redden it up a little bit, maybe, with some alizarin. See if that will gray it down anyway. A little bit of yellow in there. We'll green it up. Okay, maybe something in here that's a little... colors and stick in there maybe in some areas to show we got some light coming through. I'm just picking up this yellow, uh, lemon yellow, and just sort of overlaying on some of these to show there's some brighter green in there so that it's not all one tone. Something like this. Go back and get some of that dark color and put a few more wispy things here like that and this has got some other branches coming off I 
Change the color if you can. Pick up something different. Okay, we're getting mixtures of colors there. Over here we got some, put in some darks. And this area over here has got some very dark stuff going on right over here, right on the edge. I'm gonna block that in, step back, take a look, see if it's looking like the distant trees that I know we're trying to paint. Just a very, very dry brush here. Okay, now let's start putting in some shadows in here under these trees. So, same color, but we're just now making some shadows out of it. I'm going to pop a little in here. I'm going to put some flowers over this before I start painting the uh, surface of the green. There's a lot of darks over here. Too wet, it needs to be drier. This is dark. Back in here, let's put a few more vertical things. Okay. It's kind of getting the flavor of the golf course as, <clears throat> as I see it. And we start coming down into this area, we start getting that whole bank of flowers. There's a lot of uh, small flowers. I'm going to pick up a round brush. I think I want to get some of this green out of my palette here while I'm at it myself a place to work. All right, that'll work. Now let's see if we can get some. I got some magenta, primary red magenta here. Take a little of this other red, this cad red. And I'm going to even take my alizarin red and see, I have three colors of red here, three tones. And I'm going to take my ultraviolet, throw it in. So, see I've got something pink, a little redder red with orange in it, and a little red with purple in it. And I'm picking up my purple. So, combinations of these are going to make this abstract bank of flowers back in this area. That's so beautiful. It is so makes it really stand out back here. So this is the beauty part of this course. Let's get some of the reds in there. Save some room for the shadows and so forth. This just goes, this color really sort of just goes everywhere back here. I'm not painting specific flowers as I've told you many times. I'm painting abstract shapes that make it look like specific or make it look like just an abstract set of flowers. Using the purple to sort of darken down some of the areas to give it a three-dimensional look. If you have three values in your <coughs> objects you'll start making them look abstract or 
it'll make them look three-dimensional is what I want to say. If you have three values, it'll make them look like they have dimension. Over here we got some bright reds floating around. Mix it up, add some of the other colors. A little blossom going on there. I have a bridge that comes across here. There's a few flowers and things blooming over here. All right. <clears throat> a few more over here. Let's see if we can get... Don't want to make them too distinct on the right side. The area I want you to look is sort of in this area here. And uh, so I'm going to try to keep the sharpest detail and the brightest colors if I can in this area that I want you to look at. It's another artist secret that you need to know. The focal point should be the area with the most detail and the most interest. Areas that are away from the center of interest need to be more abstract, less detail. You don't want the eye flowing off the <clears throat> paper going back there. You want the eye to sort of stay in here and flow around. So that's what I'm trying to do. Some more of this violet. <clears throat> Pick up a little bit in here. I'm just sort of filling in the gaps, making some of these spots. All right. Got that done. So we're basically doing this painting top to bottom, pretty much. Um, I think that might be enough for the for that. That's uh, I can always get those colors. I know exactly what colors I use for that, so I can come back to those. They're mostly right out of the palette. That primary red magenta, alizarin, and cad red, ultraviolet. Not a lot of mixing to make those colors. Um, all right, let's see now. I'm gonna start. Seeing if I can get in some of this this green back here. There's a the green that goes back. Uh, I'm using. I picked up my round brush, my number eight round, when I started those flowers. I don't think I told you that. Um, but a little cyan blue. I learned this when I did my other practice. And lemon yellow. The thing I didn't practice before was using this other yellow, my primary yellow, with either of the blues to see if I can get a color that matches that green. Um, has a little more blue in it that case. If I pick a little ultra blue, and that has entirely different colors, uh, a lot more gray in this. So I want this bright, bright, bright green. That's the, usually the surface of these golf course greens. So, <coughs> back in here is some of that green. Needs more yellow, it's too green. And I want to run it all along here. Something like that. It has some different values in it because there's some undulation in that green.
ping around my little sand trap there. There's a little sand trap that's right here. There's a, a shadow that comes down the area. And here is just a little slightly different color of green, but it's noticeable. I'm picking up my other yellow, it's got a little orange in it just to change the orange color. It's a noticeable difference. Okay. Then, as the color, as the bank turns, as this green starts to get out of the sunlight a little bit, it starts changing its color. I'm going to get a little bit of water in here and sort of wet this. So I can get this flow to connect together for one and to darken it down just a little. It's not a sharp drop off, it's sort of an angular drop off, but it's it drops off nevertheless. I'm sort of making these brush strokes go the way the land goes. <clears throat> so I'm hoping to give you a shadow there that looks like we're dropping off. There's a little, actually a little path. I don't think I'll put that little, there's a little path that runs along here that it's almost too much trouble to put in, but um, Dark. Let's see what else we got. That's green. We got some green that's over here. This grass area that's on the right. I'm going to just pop in a little a bit of that right now. I'm just going to get that out of the way so since I have this green in my palette. Um, just throw it in there and get it on. This is the cart path that goes over to that green. So I want to make sure that I have it soft and ready to go. And the greens here are... It gives you good reason to close in that corner down there and then it actually has a little bit of a drop down to the water. Both of these are sort of a uh, dropped, it's like a shadow almost of this bridge. All right, soften that up, make sure they're connected together. We don't want to have a lot of this is almost too green in there for the cart path, but all right, uh, that's most of the greens I got to put in, I think. So I'm going to, oh wait, there's, a, there's another shadow area here off this green, like right in here, I think it is, yes. It's too blue, pick up some more yellow. And let's put this little shadow color in, it's gonna be darker.
right in here there's a shadow and it sort of outlines another sand trap back there. This is in the shadow. And sort of connects. There's a sand trap right here. There's a another shadow of some sort that comes out like this over the green. These trees behind you are casting a shadow. All right. This is taking a little time, but I hope you're enjoying the completeness of it. I don't want to shortchange you on this. All right, I think that's the greens. I'm going to go back now and start putting in some more of the, we got some browns and then we got this bridge. And uh, there are some browns in here that uh, there's a, like a bank of some sort that planter or something that these things are all planted in, but they sort of outlines the sand trap back here, the back of the sand trap. Sand trap runs all the way along here. It's a menacing thing. All right. Back of this sand trap is going to be the little shadow back here. And right in here. And there's some more shadows that come down here. That's a grass shadow. Okay, we're going to start our, our bridge is going to start coming across here. So, we will leave that for now. Oh, there's another area that has a bank under these, it's like a planter of some sort. Across here. All the way like that. Okay, they sort of have a little, some brown streaks in them floating down here for some reason. And then there's this bank that goes into the water. Make it a little darker maybe. It floats <clears throat> along here. It's sort of a, a wood barrier of some sort. It just sort of sits right there. Okay. All right, how are we doing here? Let's see what we're doing for time. 15, this is gonna be a lengthy video because we still have a lot to do yet, quite a bit to do. Um, the back of this bridge here, I'm gonna make it not perfectly Not a perfect uh, bridge here. I don't want the eye to move too quickly. Sort of just runs down here, and there's a little placard there that will float on the ground that tells you what this hole is. So just. the top of this bridge. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of starts with a lot of rock and stuff in this, this bridge as a whole. Very interesting. 
makeup of some sort of rock. I don't know if it's called Montana rock or what it's called. Looks like what I've seen as Montana rock. They're these circular rocks that they build fireplaces and houses out of out in the Montana area. But this is our cart path here. Need a little highlights here and there. I don't want to make it a perfect road, but I want to make it tell you this is what this is. And let's just sort of color some of this off a little bit, blend it together. All right. Okay, now we have this bridge. We have some very nice uh, reflections going on. Water, this is all water here. And uh, just take a little bit of this really light um, raw sienna. See if I can touch up just a little. I want it to be very, very light. Okay. Put some of this color back in here to sort of cover up some of these whites. We've got a lot of white paper back here that's sort of distracting. If you get too much white paper floating around, you'll get a lot of distractions. So just kind of color those down a little bit. This, uh, I'm just using this raw sienna to sort of fill in areas that are distracting whites to me. It's putting a little redness back in there. That's good. It's a, almost like a little glaze here. Okay, that's less distracting in that background now. Because really I want the focal point to sort of be in this area here. And uh, it's not quite there. All right. Um, how do we do water? We take clear water. Clear water and we paint down. Fill this in with a bit dirty brush there. So this is water that's going to have some vertical reflections. And that water comes over here. All this is water. Under the bridge. Maybe should have printed, painted the bridge first. I don't know, but I'm going to see if this will work. Put this water in. Because that bridge is very dark under there, and I can always paint over it, so it's not too worrisome to me. Um, so, <clears throat> what do we want for reflections? Water reflects what's around it, and it reflects what's in it or what's under it. So we want this to sort of reflect these different colors here. that we see. I'm putting a little uh, magenta in here. Reflect those back colors. As it comes down, it starts reflecting more of the actual trees and things that are back there. Even got some green in there. I'll see if I can put a little bit of green in this thing. It's really dark. It actually has a very dark section right here that's very close. <clears throat> I 
something like that for the water there. The water on the other, underneath this bridge is picking up the pinks and the Much red in there, but I'll come back and cover over a little bit. It's all wet, dried out back here. browns and kind of stuff in here. I haven't painted the bridge, but you see the bridge. By just painting these reflections. can pick up a little of this maybe too late I'll just put in a if I can't pick it up I can lay it down lay down a color left is our bridge, the side of the bridge. Um, I think I ended up with some, I needed some more. It's dark green over here that I didn't put in when I was painting this section right here. Um, here there's some shadows coming down that are fairly dark. <clears throat> I'm coming over the course. Something like that. Give us some nice dark shadow in there. This is all part of the area that drops down and drop off. 
Okay, now, how are we going to do this bridge? Think about it for a second. <clears throat> I think I'm going to paint it all one color and then come back and sort of carve out the rocks with some shadows. So the underlying color of that bridge is wet it too, I think. Put water on it to uh, let it run just a little bit better. Um, that underlying color is sort of a reddish, what I can tell it's sort of a reddish brown of some sort. Um, taking my dark sienna and my cad red to see what I can come up with. If I can get a color that I like close to that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to lay this in as the underlying color for all of this in here. Okay, that's the underlying, underlying color. And then I'm going to come back and use my darks and come back and just define the rocks that are in there. But I need to let that dry so I can come back with some wet on dry. So let's get this dryer out. Okay, let's see now. I'm going to get my round brush. <clears throat> Take this color that I started with. I'm going to just darken it down now with some more browns and some ultra tint or neutral tint. And see if I can. I'm going to put in this shadow area first, I think, with this neutral tint. Dark, dark, dark right in here. I think it's got to go. I think I've got that drawn wrong slightly. I'm going to paint it right and see if I can correct it. Always put a darker paint over lighter paint, but you cannot put a lighter paint over dark paint in watercolors. Okay, I think this one on the left needs to be just a little wider. Put out like this. Okay. Because you see more of it because of the angle that it's sitting. So we have to account for that. All right. This area here is now, this is all dark. I'm going to pull this down into the water. And because I dried it, that's not running well, right? Because it's dry. So 
So what do you do? You put a little water on it and just pull it down. Clear water. There we go. Don't leave any hard edges in there. You will. Everybody will know that's a. It's a reflection. And then over here, I got the same issue. So I'm going to put some clear water there and pull down one more of this color here. this and I have a hard edge forming up on the left side here so I'm going to water on it water on the edge will soften that edge okay there we go now all right I don't have to put every rock and block in this thing, but I do want to clear some of this off here. Do want to show you that I have rocks in here. Yeah, it's probably too dry maybe. Let's see if I can Prove that by waiting over just a little. Something like that, and then sort of blur it, mess it up a little bit, and come back and put in some more. Something like that, and then just sort of give it some other colors in here to make it. I don't know if that's looking right or not, but I'm not going to put in every one of these. So, if you want to see a perfect set of rocks that are side of the bridge. I'm not going to take the time to do that. I could probably take the time to do that. Um, I have the time. I don't think any of you want to watch me paint 1400 round rocks in this thing. So we're impressionistically putting in these things so that they, they represent a lot of rocks but you don't see a lot of rocks. So the curves and the angles and the are all meant to give you the impression this is a rocky and bumpy surface here. All right. Could have some darker darks in some of those areas. This area under the bridge is still pretty light. Um, these areas could be darker. Another dark coat will help help that. Same over here. Okay, and sort of 
make it connect to the water. Clear water, soften the edges. All right, and what else do I need to do? I think that's pretty close to what I want to say. The thing I didn't put in was the uh, little flag back there in the Gulf by the hole. I'm gonna make some of these things connect this together as well. So there, got some trees showing in the background. All right, um, get my little script liner here and get a Usually these flags are white. Um, I don't know if white's going to show up in this thing or not, but I'm going to put a little... I have a little triangular area there that's white. So, hopefully that will give the impression that that is I just blotted the whole thing up with my paper towel where to go yeah, it's hard for you to see that I know but anyway that is what I want to do for this painting um, I could spend another hour on it probably but um, I think I'll zoom back now with my fancy controls and say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this painting. I hope you give it a try. Give me some comments, ask me some questions, I'll try to answer them and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that as well. And until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye bye.